So the flower that I thought I'd talk about this morning was Gyp, or what you might pronounce Gypsothea, or some people can pronounce it Gypsophilia, or a lot of people just call it baby's breath, or other people call it, you know that white fluffy stuff with all the little balls. So you all know the type of flower I'm talking about anyway. So this is what a bunch of jib comes from the wholesalers, from our suppliers. This is how it's delivered. And there's 25 stems in a packet. So if anybody was ordering this wholesale and you just ordered a packet of jib, this is more than likely what you will be sent out. It is sold by the weight. So sometimes when you open your packet of jib, which I'll do later on, when you open the packet, you often find um, why are some of the stems really, really large this week and maybe last week or like next week when I buy it and it's really, really small. But a lot of people don't realise that you're paying by the weight for the jib. So just because it's cheap, it doesn't mean that it's actually cheap. It's probably that it's a lesser quality and it's much, much lighter. I always find from around 30 to 40 gram, that's what we would normally buy in here at the school. So it's a good quality jib and it's nice and heavy and there's lots and lots of cutting on it. But when people would say to me, oh, I got it much cheaper somewhere else, I'd probably say, you get what you pay for, you know that way. So if you're buying a cheaper quality, it's definitely going to be a lot lighter. So when it comes, it always comes in a plastic bag. And if you've been watching any of our conditioning videos so far, I always recommend that you remove the plastic from the flowers. And I would have mentioned something called ethylene gas. So ethylene gas is a ripening gas or a maturing gas that flowers release. And when the flowers are left inside the plastic, as well as them sweating inside the plastic, the gas can't escape. And normally what happens is the stems then all start to rot, the leaves go slimy and mushy, and it doesn't really look very nice, you know, that way. So normally that's why we remove the plastic from the flowers. But jib, believe it or not, is the opposite. It actually likes humidity. It likes that sweaty atmosphere. So keep it wrapped in the plastic or even wrap it up in paper. You know, that way it's something to stop it drying out. You often find with jib, like most flowers when they die or you have dead flowers, like the heads pop over, you know, that way and they're dead. But with jib, when it dies, it really goes brown. It dries out. It doesn't actually, obviously it dies, but it more dries out than goes as a, as a dead flower. So what you're trying to do is keep it moist. So if you have just a normal water mist or container, it's absolutely perfect. And keep it as moist as you can. So spray it quite regular, even if it's in a floral arrangement, just spray it quite regular. And if you're storing it, keep it wrapped up, like brown paper would do fine, or leave it in the plastic for a couple of days. But obviously keep an eye on it through the plastic. Sometimes like through the plastic, you might see where the stem is starting to go a little bit slimy, you know that way. Maybe it's old, you know that way, but just watch out for that. So keep an eye on the stems. But um, normally like it could last a good week inside the plastic. So when you go to remove it from the plastic, I find, um, I'll just step back here a little bit, I find is to turn it upside down, you know that way? So turn it upside down and remove the plastic. Now there's normally an elastic band on the end of this which I've just removed already. So first thing is cut at least an inch off the end of your flowers on a slant. So good sharp scissors. Again, I'm left allowing all the rubbish here to grow on, go on the floor. Sorry, dear. <laughs> so cut a good inch off the end of your flowers there on a slant. And then when you go to separate it, this is why when you go into a flower shop and they have the jib on display in a bucket and you go to help yourself, they nearly dive on you. Because what will happen is you're going to break the stems. You need to hold it upside down and like take one of the stems and kind of like shake it. And that's how you can kind of untangle it. So you can see there, there's a stem of jib. And then take the next one, again, shake it. You see, just to untangle it. And there's the second stem of jib. And then untangle it. And I think this one is more on the outside first. So there you can see already I've separated three stems of jib, which I'm just going to hold up now. And you can see that looks quite large, you know, that way. But if you try to separate it yourself when you go into a flower shop, and obviously you're looking for the largest stem, but when you pull it, this is how it gets broken, you know, that way. So a hint for you is turn it upside down, remove what you want. So we just say you needed these three stems. And then what I would recommend, plastic bags on the floor here now, what I'd recommend is get it and insert it back inside your plastic bag. And it's no harm every couple of days to cut a little bit off all flowers, like not just the jib. The more you cut flowers, the more they drink water. So even if you were to come along every day and just take a little smidgery bit off the end, like, you know, a centimetre as low, just take a small amount off the end of all the flowers. Every time you cut a flower, it immediately sucks. So imagine like you cut a flower and it goes, and it's going to suck up the water out of the vase. 
and hoping that you have your water sterilized. Remember I talked about that before, about sterilizing our buckets and having a small taint of bleach in the water that the flowers are going to drink and then adding flower food to the water. So when you cut your flowers then, your water is drinking up nice clean bacteria free water with flower food in it and that's obviously going to prolong the life. And the more flower food, which is really a preservative, so the more flower food you can get up into the stems, the longer your flowers are going to last. So that's why we recommend taking a small amount of them every day or so, even though some people might say, I'll just cut them once a week. But definitely I find here in the shop or in the school, if you cut them every day, just a small amount of them, it definitely helps to prolong the life of them. So hopefully that has answered some people's questions on the gym. If you have any questions at all, just comment below or feel free to email me here at the school at info at flowerschoolireland.com. Now I have lots of other live videos on conditioning different types of flowers, whether it be roses, chrysanthemums, carnations, etc. And they're all on our website under blog. So go to the website, which is www.flowerschoolireland.com. And along the top, along the buttons, you'll see one of the buttons says blog. And when you click, click on the blog button in the drop down menu, you'll see lots of our videos, lots of live videos there on making the bows. So if you missed out our Granza bow the other morning, there's definitely a video up there for making the bow. And also lots of other bows that I've already demonstrated here. And also you see the ones on conditioning the flowers. But if there's maybe a flower that you'd like to see me conditioning live, again, just comment below or email or ring me here at the school.